Um, so let's start um, down at the bottom. Um, last time we identified the Iliac Crest um, and found all the way up there tippy top. Um, if we drew a straight line across at that point, that would be about at the position of L4. Um, and if we, you know, up through these next few, there's not necessarily any strong vertebral landmarks, but the next one that's really reliable is if you can find the scapula, and this should be pretty easy to uh, feel through palpation, and find the inferior angle of the scapula, where it sort of forms a point there at its end. That, if we draw a horizontal line, that's T7. And then again on the scapula, if you work your way up and you can find the scapular spine, um, that where that scapular spine ends, right there, if we drew that horizontal line, that's going to be T3. Um, and then there's, there's some other ones up in the neck that we'll deal with next week when we look at the neck a little more closely. Um, but these, some of, like this T3, T7, this L4, these landmarks I think are really helpful clinically um, to be able to describe the back in a way that's consistent. I bet they are. Um, so if you find a lesion on somebody, it's helpful to be able to describe exactly where that is. Exactly. Um. move into the shoulder region. I've already sort of talked about the position of the scapula, um, the spine of the scapula. That's a helpful landmark. Um, it's an attachment for the trapezius as well as the deltoid. Uh, above the spine would be supraspinatus. Below the spine would be infraspinatus. Um, that, that'll be a little easier to feel that muscle on this side, um, on infraspinatus, because there's not as much muscle in front of it. Um, lat dorsi is this big old muscle mass. Um, that occupies most of the back. Um, trapezius would be all of this, and then coming down, probably about to T12, would be about the end of the road for the trapezius. where I want to start is um, with massage up the erector spinae here. Um, spinalis, um, I thought that spinalis stopped kind of right in here, but then there's there's more spinalis, like thoracic spinalis, mm -hmm. and even, is cervical there cervical spinalis? spinalis? Yep. So, um, so that's interesting to me because in massage therapy class, I learned that spinellus stops right around here, you know, kind of at the end of trapezius, or maybe it goes just a little bit past that. And then longissimus comes all the way up to the occiput, and iliocostalis comes right up here under the shoulder. So one of the things that people feel in this place here 
most people consider this owie section of their body to be primarily a result of the rhomboids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and people will say, oh, my rhomboids, <laughs> you right. know, because that's what they've learned, I suppose. But I am thoroughly convinced that much of the problematic situation in here is due to iliocostalis and uh, splenius capitis, splenius cervicis, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as yeah. you massage it and it feels better. <laughs> um, but, uh, if you think about uh, being able to be so much more effective in the belly of the muscle rather than right where the muscle is attaching to the bones, mm -hmm. Um, I think it makes a difference in terms of how you're going to massage somebody who's got some owies in here. You know, we, we learned while he was supine that the, the pectoral muscles have so much to do with pain in this region. Um, but also, this muscle right here totally does. So, we'll be working on this in class quite a bit, this erector spinae, and we can Massage it with our elbow. This is some elbow effleurage. So a long gliding stroke done with our, actually it's more kind of just off the elbow. You're not putting the point of your elbow on it, but more the forearm here. Right up that erector spinae. How's that feel to you? Good. Great. And then we turn around and go the other direction. And this, um, this back and forthing thing that we do here with our elbows has uh, the effect of loosening the fascia and separating the muscle fibers. It's just so that blood and lymph fluid can flow through there so much more easily. So any kind of cross fiber, you know, the fibers of these muscles run pretty much uh, inferior to superior here. Um, so if you do a little bit of that lobster claw thing that you mm -hmm. saw kind of across the fibers of the muscle, you'll probably have a little better... Uh, opportunity to feel that muscle giving up its tension. Yeah. So sometimes you want to protect your thumb. If you've got somebody with big muscles, you want to go ahead and hold your thumb right up against your finger when you're doing this maneuver. Oh, it's starting to soften up now. So sometimes uh, if you find the place where the most tension is in the belly of the muscle. You can use compression, as you have seen, I'm sure, by this time, um, to really facilitate that muscle letting go. So we're going to do that for a minute here because Matt definitely has a knot in this <laughs> muscle. <laughs> One of those hard knots. So breathe right into my thumb there, Matt. Really push my thumb with your breath. That's perfect. So I'm lightening my pressure as he breathes in. And then as he exhales, I'm just going to sort of pulse into that muscle. Good. Let's do that two more times, Matt. Breathing right in. Pushing my thumb with your breath. Right here. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good. And then just let it go. Sometimes you have to slow way down to, to get the job done. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite teachers says, if you're not accomplishing your goal, either lighten your pressure or slow your velocity. So sometimes when you're going for those deep areas and you're trying to palpate on somebody, something deep in their belly or something, Slow your velocity, lower your tone of voice, and soften your fingers, and you will get there. So the place where they
they might feel pain from trapezius is down here where, or all along here, mm -hmm. perhaps, but oftentimes it'll be right in here uh, where trapezius comes to a point on the spine. Or up here in the occiput, it'll give them a headache. Um, or up in here, but this is more often levator scapula, actually, even though people feel like it's their traps. Um, so what we're going to do is, and you'll be doing this too, is kind of unrolling trapezius right up here by the occiput, and then we're just going to come down the neck, just unrolling it and sifting it between our fingers, all the way to the clavicle, and then going deeper and sifting through the Vader scapula as well. So I'm just grabbing and moving my fingers back and forth like this. So grab and sift. Great. So if that is very tender on your person, then you'll be wanting to find the places that levator scapula attaches to the transverse processes of the cervical spine, and you can totally feel that right in here. But you want to just feel those transverse processes and kind of soothe them, you know, kind of circular motion, little circular friction around those transverse processes, and then at the same time or or nearly at the same time, get a thumb or a, a blade of your hand or something on this uh, place that the levator attaches to the superior angle of the spine, I mean the scapula. So I really do this <clears throat> with crossed hands right here. Am I pushing too hard, Matt? No. Does it feel good? Yes. And usually, if you massage uh, the place that the muscle originates and inserts at the same time, uh, somehow it seems to send a message to the muscle to let go. So. It's one of many things that you can do to help a muscle release its tension. And if you look at somebody's scapulae, and one of them is kind of smoked down onto the ribs, mm -hmm. um, and you can, I don't know if you can see that on Matt, but you might be able to if you get the camera right here, that this shoulder plate is kind of out to the side, uh, more yeah, laterally it is. Mm -hmm. placed than this shoulder blade is, and it is kind of down on the ribs a little bit mm -hmm. more. This is higher on, the, on, the, on his left. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to massage serratus anterior. And uh, many massage therapists will go like this to get to serratus anterior. See how that pushes mm -hmm. that shoulder blade up. I don't like that move because if you, it, I don't know if you saw, but when I put his hand up on his back like this, that pushes that shoulder forward. Mm -hmm. And forward shoulder is one of the things I'm combating. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't do that very much. So I'm just going to lean my belly up against your arm here. And that's another thing, you know, I, um, I learned in massage therapy school not to put my body on people when I'm massaging them with my hands, uh, but in fact, that hurts my body to try to make sure that I don't touch anybody anywhere except right. with my hands. So I just go ahead and talk about it mm -hmm. so people know that I am putting a part of my body on them that's safe and fine and that they don't have to move out of my way. Sure. <laughs> So, I would encourage you all to do that too. So here I have his shoulder in my hand, and I'm just going to tuck my fingers, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of resting my hand on his back so I've got some leverage. And I'm massaging the medial border 
of the scapula, which is where serratus anterior attaches on the anterior of the scapula. Does that feel good? Uh-huh. Excellent. Okay. So let's see if that changed the situation or if we have to massage subscapularis as well. Can you tell? I still it's think still that the foot's higher on that side. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> when you're preparing to massage subscapularis, you want to Make this shoulder blade as loose and floppy as you can. And then just draw your hand back and ask the... Okay, so you're, you're, what you're trying to do is find the pocket of emptiness between the shoulder blade and the ribs. My hand's all wadded up like this. So breathe right into this rib here for me, Matt. That's a way. And then just think of softening, letting go of your shoulder blade. Now you don't want to push hard uh, because it'll hurt your hand and it will hurt their armpit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and you don't want to take your hand all the way out either because then all of the headway that you've made in terms of getting them accustomed to you having your hand in their armpit is going to go away. So you want to just leave your hand there and maybe shift their shoulder blade back and forth again a little bit. So take a breath, Matt. That's the way. And then just let go. That's the way. Nice. Thank you. And then I'm pushing the backs of my fingers up against his ribs and asking him to push my fingers with his breath. Big breath. Way out to the side here if you can get it. That's it. Good job. And then just let your shoulder blade float up into your ear while I go up in there. That's nice. Oh, that's perfect. Is there tenderness up in there for you? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You see, he is tightening his shoulder here. It's it's hard not to. Yep. There. Good job. <laughs> so it's good that you let go. So, um, if as a massage therapist, or if when you go to your massage therapist, the massage therapist pushes past your guarding, that is not a good thing. <laughs> um, it's, it is very common for a massage therapist to do and I totally can relate uh, to new massage therapists not understanding everything that they're doing um, but it is important that the massage therapist doesn't push past your guard because A, they won't get to the deep tissues they're trying to get to and B, they might do some damage while they're trying <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. okay just a little better. That's it. <laughs> it's it's totally even now. Yay. High five. <laughs> <laughs>